That out of this world story we have, we've been following this morning, Perseverance making its way to Mars after a seven month journey into space, sending back the first images. Jennifer Trosper, a deputy project manager, is joining us right now. And Jennifer, thank you so much for joining joining us. We watched we watched the team celebrate. We celebrated as Prosper landed, and you were at Mission Control for it. But your home office, where you help plan the mission, it isn't your typical office space. What is it? That's right. Well, just like everybody else, we had to figure out how to work remotely. And so I actually worked from my laundry room. I have a little desk in there. And uh, most of the work I did remotely since uh, the COVID pandemic started was right from my laundry room. <laughs> well, that's, that's interesting to hear. And we know you've worked on all five rover missions. But during this landing, there was a seven minute blackout from the rover. But what was, go what was going through your mind during those seven minutes? And what did it mean to you when it finally touched down? Yeah, I have to admit that after four successful rovers being on the fifth one, I was just nervous that they couldn't all possibly work. And so I was worried and, and we, we actually were getting some data and we got good data and then we got some confusing data. And so I think there's just so much riding on those seven minutes, the whole science mission, the years that we've put into it. And so, yeah, I was a little bit nauseous. And then at the end, I was ecstatic and uh, kind of still feel like I'm dreaming. And you, you're not the only one who's ecstatic. Our viewers were ecstatic as well about this mission, and they sent in a lot of questions. So we're going to get started with Maria, who asked, I know the rover's searching for signs of life on Mars. How does it do that? And when will it bring samples back to Earth? Yeah, well, the rover actually is, we're searching for signs of life on Mars, just like we do on Earth when we're looking for ancient microbial life. We've actually landed in an ancient lake and river delta, and we go to areas like outcrops, the edges of the, the river delta, where we would see signs of microbial life on Earth, and then that's where we'll take our samples from on Mars. Then after a few years, we will deposit those in a place on the surface of Mars, and eventually those will come back to Earth in the early 2030s. Early 2030. Wow. Okay, let's talk about patience right there. Or, and Stephanie, or a little earlier than, or a little earlier. Or, or a little <laughs> earlier. And, and I, we have another question. Stephanie, she tweeted, my son would like to know if the rover decides where to drive or are you controlling it from Earth? What's the answer to that? We do both. Actually, early on, we, we take some baby steps. So we'll get the images down here on Earth and we will tell the rover exactly where we want it to drive. But after it gets a little bit more confident, we will give it a, a location we want it to drive to, and then it will use its cameras and its algorithms to figure out the safest way to get there all by itself. Well, we appreciate you answering our questions this morning, and congratulations to you and your team. And amazing you were able to do a lot of this from the laundry room. <laughs> Well, have a, have a great you. day. It's great Thank to be with you. It is great to be with you. Thank you. Well, hey there, GMA fans. Robin Roberts here. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Lots of great stuff here. So go on, click the subscribe button right over, right over here to get more of awesome videos and content from GMA every day, anytime. We thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the morning on GMA.